Japan is home to some of the most popular cuisine on earth, and there's a reason for that. They take pride and put a lot of care into pretty much everything they do. They also throw a bunch of street festivals throughout the year. And the food served at these street festivals are quite famous. So today we're gonna make three of the most popular street foods that the land of the rising sun has to offer. Then we're gonna talk about if these things are even worth making at home or not. Before we begin, let's take a quick field trip to the Japanese market. This is Mitsuwa. It's one of my favorite grocery stores in the Chicagoland area, hands down. This spot has a wide array of Japanese imported ingredients, foods, and other items. Like they got this really dope bookshop too. This is my go-to spot whenever I'm looking for any Japanese specialty ingredients that you might not find at, say, the Korean or the Chinese grocery store, which are much more common around where I live. I'm here for some of the stuff that we're going to use to make our okonomiyaki, takoyaki, and taiyaki. Yeah, a lot of yakis, I know. If you're interested in making any of the recipes in this video and are having trouble sourcing the ingredients, I recommend doing a Google search for a specifically Japanese market near your crib, getting out in the world, and exploring it. One of the biggest skill sets for any chef or avid home cook to have is knowledge of where to source ingredients. And if you can build up a mental map of where you need to go to get what, it's gonna make your time in the kitchen a lot more fun and your food a lot tastier. Anyways, they even got this little section of Japanese cooking gear, which is exactly one of the reasons I came here today. For this taiyaki pan, little fishy mold vibe. You can also grab your takoyaki pan here as well. If I'm not taking a karaage bowl or some ramen from the food court, I usually grab myself some fresh takoyaki from the little themed street stall in the shop. Sadly, the dude wasn't there making the little takoyakis and flipping them all about like he usually is, but never fear, they still had some made so I was able to get some fresh. You already know the vibe. Ooh. I'll show you a little more of this later in the video when we actually make the takoyaki, but for now, let's get going on one of the backbones of Japanese cuisine, this stuff. All right, before we get going, we need to talk about this right here. This is a staple in Japanese cuisine called dashi. It's basically a seaweed and dried smoked fish stock. This stuff right here, it's called kombu, right? It's seaweed. It's basically the essence of umami. When you see it in its dry form here before it's been soaked, it's got these little crystals on it. That leaches out into the water and adds a depth of umami to our stock. I've had this soaking in the fridge overnight, but if you just wanna pop your kombu in water for like 30 minutes, that'll get the job done too. To begin, we will take all of this water and the seaweed and pop it in a stock pot. We just bring this up on medium heat. While our seaweed's coming up, I want to talk about this stuff here. I have this in the house at all times. Um, this is instant dashi, han dashi, right? Basically, it's a soup mix that you add to water for an instant dashi and you could skip all these steps. Real dashi is always going to be better and always going to be what I prefer. But if you don't have this stuff in the house or you're having trouble finding it or you just for some reason don't want to go buy it, this stuff is a uh, less expensive and easier alternative. Right when it starts to just barely simmer, you start to see some of that steam come off the water. It's time to take out the kombu. We're gonna remove that. If you don't remove it and you let these things, this boil out, it can get really bitter, kind of slimy and gnarly. So definitely don't bring this to a rolling boil. All right, so go ahead and put this under your pillow and come back to it in a couple months. Mm, essence of the sea. We're gonna cut the heat and we're gonna put this stuff in. This is katsuobushi, shaved smoked bonito flakes, right? Basically, smoky fish food, but not actually. So I'm just gonna pop some of this in here. All the measurements will be in the recipe. Mm -hmm, that looks good. And we let that steep for two, three minutes. Now you can just strain it off. Skim any of this off. And boom! There is our dashi. This is used in so many different applications in Japanese cooking. I like to make a big batch like this, use what I need for whatever I'm doing, and just freeze the rest. It's great in a pinch. Lots of different cultures have their own version of savory pancakes, and in Japan, it's okonomiyaki. Okonomi meaning preference, yaki meaning grilled. Okonomiyaki is known for its beautiful striping and its ability to soak up booze after a long night. You can see these sold in restaurants or on the street, it just kind of depends. There are lots of different styles of okonomiyaki. Today, we're gonna talk about the two most popular. Of the popular styles of okonomiyaki, Osaka style might be the most popular, the most well-known outside the country at least. This is the easier version of the okonomiyakis we're gonna be making today, so I figured we'd start here. We're gonna add our liquids to the bowl here, starting with dashi, a bit of mirin, two eggs, and we're gonna give that a whiskey whiskey. Just whisk that up till the eggs incorporate nicely with everything else. 
Now we can add in our dry ingredients. We're gonna go in with some all-purpose flour. Whisk that a boot. If you go slowly in the middle, you're gonna have a smoother batter. All right, so yeah, something like that. Basically like a fishy pancake batter. All right, now we're gonna add in a little bit of thinly sliced cabbage, maybe a lot bit. In some of these, this is Tokyo Negi or Japanese leek. It's basically just a big daddy scallion. And lastly, these tempura bits here. A little extra crunch in there. Now we just mix it again. Mm. You know what? I think I might add a pinch of salt for good measure. Beautiful, a nice chunky cabbagey batter. It's gonna make a nice pancake. So okonomiyaki needs okonomi sauce. This stuff you can find at a lot of different Asian markets, whether it's a Japanese, Korean, Chinese market, it's very popular. You can also get it online, I'll leave links below. Or you can make it yourself with stuff that I think you might already have in your fridge. Equal parts ketchup and Worcestershire and McDerber. Then a bit of soy sauce and sweetener in the form of honey or I have some corn syrup here. It's a little less sweet, a little more viscous. As you can see, this is extremely easy to do. But if you can get this, I recommend it. It's just kind of like perfected and it's what they use at most street vendors, so. Look at that, we even have the little Naruto edition. What a guy. I'm gonna oil the plancha and maloop that right down, just like that. As that sizzles down, we're gonna add some of these little pork belly strips on top. These are not bacon, they're just little strips of uncured fresh pork belly. So you can decorate that however you see fit. Just kind of fill the surface up. Now we gotta give it a flip ski. You gotta be confident with your flip. That pork belly is gonna continue to kind of cook and crisp up under there. You can flip it around to kind of play some hot potato with it till you think it's fully cooked through. It's quite simple. All right, let's flip her over and take a peek. Oh yeah, it looks great. We're gonna give it a nice little tattoo with our glaze. I'm gonna use the homemade stuff here. This is the okonomi sauce. Let's get that off the heat. So to top this off, we got our mayonnaise here. A little bit of QP Japanese mayonnaise. Just a little mayonnaise. I'm just gonna do a little more sauce. This is the store-bought sauce. See how it's just a little more glossy and put together. More of those dried fish flakes. And we just have a little bit of dried seaweed sprinkles. Boom, there you have Osaka Okonomiyaki. In Hiroshima, they do Okonomiyaki a little differently, right? In Osaka, you kind of have that whole pancake situation here. It's more of a layered vibe, if you will. We gotta make the batter. It's a little different. Into the bowl goes some dashi, mirin, un oof, and a pinch of kosher. Now we're gonna mix that up. So same thing, the ratios are just a little different here. This is definitely more of a crepe batter than a pancake batter, meaning it's very thin. Now we're gonna go in with our all-purpose flour. I like adding dry on top of liquid because I feel like it incorporates easier and better. So you can see a lot more slack, a lot more liquidy. Hiroshima style okonomiyaki is a little more technical than the Osaka style here. You can see I'm using the same plancha, but this time it is important that we're using sort of a longer two burner situation here. You can do this in one pan for sure. It's just gonna be a little trickier. We're gonna pop a little earl down. So we're gonna take some of our batter here and make a crepe. On the crepe, we're gonna add some cabbage, some bean sprouts. These are both raw. We're gonna just add a little pinch of salt, pork strips, followed by a wee bit more batter and some of these little crispy tempura bits. Now for the exciting part, we get to flip this thing. Give it a flippy. And the beautiful thing about this is you can just adjust it once it's flipped, like so. While that's kind of just cooking on that side, I'm gonna take some yakisoba noodles and pop that on the plancha. And so you don't have to, but you can season your noodles a little bit. I have this ramen pepper stuff, which is uh, actually clearly for ramen. It's got some black pepper, roasted garlic, a little onion powder uh, and garlic powder. So I'm just gonna pop some of that on. Just a little bit for a touch of flavor. Toss that around a bit. And then you can shape it into a circle about the same size as your crepe. Pop it right on the noodles there. I'm just gonna move this over here. Now we're just gonna pop in our egg, give that a little chop, and try to form it to a, you know, a circle kind of the same size as your crepe. Mm. 
Now we're just gonna take our noodles again and just lift that whole thing right onto the egg. Plop that down right there. Now I'm just gonna paint this guy with our Okonomi sauce, just like the last one. Very similar toppings here. We have a dusting of those nori flakes. Onion slap. Just a little bit of pickled red ginger. I almost forgot one garnish. Here we got some katsuobushi, but it's very finely shredded as you can see. It's optional, you can pop some on if you want. I would have done it maybe under the green onion layer, but just a little bit over the top will be nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There you have it, Hiroshima Okonomiyaki. I'm just gonna pizza it up. You can see that side, all that cabbage and the green onions and stuff. Semi-sweet, savory. That's when I think of okonomiyaki, the style I think about. Would be great with a cold beer. This one is a little different here, and I'll show you why. You got your egg layer, the noodle layer, the pork, all the vegetables here, the green onions, katsuobushi, ginger. And it holds together actually probably easier than you would think, but that doesn't really mean that it's like that easy to eat. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> I'm doing that wrong, man. Someone in Japan's gonna be like The final question, is okonomiyaki worth making at home? I'm gonna say yes and no. The Hiroshima version is definitely a little trickier to make. You know, there's more going on in it, there's more ingredients, and the technique is harder. You need a little bit of special gear. If you don't have a plancha, it's a lot harder. That one, if you can get it elsewhere, I would say buy it. Again, I don't wanna dissuade you from trying anything new. Try making it if you're interested in it. But for me, when I make okonomiyaki, it's probably gonna be this Osaka style here. It's just, uh, to me, easier to eat in like the classic flavor and texture that I know and that I feel like most people know when it comes to okonomiyaki. Mm. Takoyaki are octopus filled dough balls, right? They're kind of crispy on the outside, gooey on the inside, making them sort of like a oceany, fishy Japanese gusher. Yeah, no. Takoyaki was invented in the 1930s in Osaka. Takoyaki got famous because one, it's delicious. Two, it looks cool. And three, it looks cool to watch being made. When I was in Japan staying in Kyoto, uh, the first thing we did after dropping off our stuff at the Airbnb was walk to the grocery store to get food for the Airbnb. And I remember this little dude out there just grilling takoyaki on this massive plancha. I think that was my first time having it too. There's just something about staring into the plancha, hot and bubbly as a random guy uses toothpicks to flip around little octopus balls. You know what I mean? Takoyaki batter. Doshi in. A little bit of soy sauce. Two egg tree. Now we're just gonna give that a little whisk. Just make sure that egg is completely whisked in. For the dry, we have all purpose flour, baking pow, and a pinch of kosher. So, takoyaki batter is again thin, more like a crepe batter than a pancake batter. Keep whisking until it's nice and smooth and everything's incorporated. We're going for no lumps. Feel free to get a little aggro with it. See what I mean? See what I mean? Here we have an octopus talon, loin, tentacle. There it is. This is already cooked. This is the taco for our takoyaki, right? We basically just need to cut this into little portions that will fit nicely in our ball holes. Check this out, guys. This is the first knife I got in Japan. We just want little cubes of octopus, nothing massive. I understand this is kind of an obscure ingredient. If you're in the middle of the country or elsewhere, it might be hard to find. So if that's the case, you can kind of put whatever you want in your takoyaki. It wouldn't quite be takoyaki, maybe it would be spam yaki. Add a little piece of spam in there and sub for the octopus and boom, you can make takoyaki at home too. So no need for the puss, but the puss is preferred. Before we begin, we got our pan preheating over medium heat. We have our octopus chunks. These can also be spam chunks. A little bit of minced red ginger, some scallywag sliced nice and thin, and some of those tempura crumbles. Also important tool, the wooden skewer. Neutral oil. You can be generous with the oil here. Once that's getting hot, you can pour off the excess here. Now pour the batter, fill each little hole up. You can fill it about like, you know, three quarters of the way. I fill mine to the top as you can see and it'll be fine. 
You don't have to be too neat about this. All right, so we're cooking. I'm gonna drop a little octo in each little hole, and don't worry if you overflow, it's okay. You should see the guys, man, at the, at the spots doing this. They go hard. Now it's time to garnish. I'm gonna have some of this red ginger. We're just gonna pop that all over everything. Scallions. And some of those tempura bits. These won't take long to kind of set. So after a little second here, you'll start to see that these balls can kind of flip. Just do your best to kind of push the ingredients back in the little hole and just go around the whole thing. And the cool part about this too is you got a lot of different balls. You know, you're gonna have some ugly boys, some pretty boys. At the end of the day, you'll have a bunch of balls that will taste good. Some just might look better than others. So here we got some takoyaki sauce. You can also just use okonomi sauce, the sauce that we made earlier, buy it in the store, whatever. I happen to have takoyaki sauce, so we're gonna use it. Some QP. I think I want another little streak of brown in there. Now we're gonna hit it with some more flakage. And you already know what it is. Plenty and plenty and plenty of katsuobushi. Diamonds dancing. The beautiful thing, even if you don't make the most perfect takoyaki at first, it's hidden by all this gloriousness on top, all the sauces and the fish flake and everything like that. Mm. Yeah, we love takoyaki. And you can use a toothpick to clean up afterwards. I love this stuff. I didn't grow up with it, but it's weirdly nostalgic. Because you know, it always reminds me of the first time I had it, which at this point was years ago, and um, Mmm, Is takoyaki worth making from scratch? If you have kids, you have roommates, you guys like to cook, you like doing fun little projects, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of like get your hands dirty and try something new. So I will say, I do believe takoyaki is worth making from scratch at home. It's a lot of fun. But that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Taiyaki are those fish-shaped sweet Japanese pastries that don't actually have any fish in it. Yet. Taiyaki actually originated from a round-shaped sweet that used the same batter and much of the same fillings back in the Edo period in Japan. But they got popular when a confectioner from Tokyo decided to basically make it look like a sea bream right in that fish mold that is both an auspicious fish in Japanese culture and very high value. The OG takoyaki features a sweet red bean or azuki bean paste, but you can find these things with matcha filling, chocolate filling, custard filling, really any sweet filling you can think of. Let's cook. These are red beans, also called azuki beans. Now we're gonna make a sweet red bean filling for our taiyaki, right? You could buy this from the store in little cans like this, and it is very convenient, but I will say the homemade stuff is better and you can control the consistency better. We're gonna pop some water in, just a little bit of sugar, and a pinch of kosher. Now we're just gonna basically stir this around and just kind of help that sugar and salt dissolve into the agua, making a syrup essentially. Now we can add in our beans. All right, now we're just gonna mix this up and kind of mash it with your spatula, kind of until the beans break down and turn into a paste, you shall see. I'm just spreading it on this sheet tray here so that it cools much faster. Because remember, these are beans with syrup. This is very hot, it can be dangerous, so be careful. All right, this should be cool enough. Taiyaki batter, whole milk, in, un egg. A little bit of corn scissor, but this could also be honey. Now from here you have a choose your own adventure moment. I got some vanilla extract and some ube flavoring. This could literally be any flavoring you want, right? The traditional stuff might not even have either of these in it. I like to add a little bit of vanilla. I also love this ube stuff and it turns the batter a super vibrant purple. We're gonna go classic OG for now, but I'll show you the purple stuff later. And a dash of vanilla. Now we're gonna schwisk this up. Same thing, right? We're just mixing these liquids before we add the solids. Now we got some cake flour, cornstarch, a little bit of sugs, some baking powder and baking soda, and a pinch of kosher. So you can see here, it's kind of like a medium thin batter, right? It's not quite like a pancake, but it's also not a crepe. Batter done, red beans done, now we can make our taiyaki. To make taiyaki, you can't really get around it. You need one of these fishy pans, right? There are a few things that I picked up along the way when I was testing this, so learn from my mistakes. You wanna go maybe a little hotter than you think. I'm going to, not medium low, not medium high, 
medium, almost on the dot. It's kind of a finicky thing. You'll probably have to make a couple of these to get it right. I know I probably will right now, so let's learn together. Non-stick spray. Seems like it would be a good idea, but this pan is actually very non-stick, and when I sprayed it, my batter would fall right off the top there and because it was almost like too non-stick. So I'm not gonna use any oil, which is kind of crazy. Now for this first half, you wanna go in with a very thin layer of batter and start up at the tail here, right? Push the batter around here and kind of make it so that it comes to the outside of the fish. That's gonna help your, your uh, pancake kind of like clamp onto the other side of the fish. So now we're just gonna take this, pop it on the other uh, side there, and now we can fill this up a little more. Again, I'm kind of pushing the batter to the edges here. All right, so on this side, we are going to add our little red bean logs here. Let's kind of push those down. Tiny bit more batter on top of these guys. And we can clampetize. You can see this pan has this nice little latch right here. We're just gonna flip it until we think it's ready. Oh yeah! That's good, that looks really nice. cleaned up here, but before we munch these, we're gonna do something a little wacky with this. So this is salmon that I cured with miso overnight and then hit in the broiler for a second and it is cooked through and ready to go, but not quite. In Japan, tuna mayo is a very popular flavor, specifically in like onigiri and such, so we're gonna do a salmon mayo. A little bit of lemon. It's gonna spoon a nice portion of salmon into our fish. Look at these beautiful boys. Those might be our best ones yet. Gotta give Nemo a little circumcision. All right, let's go down the line here, starting with the OG. Good old traditional taiyaki with the red bean paste. Nothing wrong with that. Ube. Mm -hmm. And the salmon, <laughs> the miso salmon. Mayo just completely melted in there and it's keeping it so moist and good. It's a whole ass meal right there. I think I just wanna take all my meals moving forward in Taiyaki's. Have a headache, Advil Taiyaki, you know? Is Taiyaki worth making at home? For the exact same reason that I said the taco yaki was worth making at home, I think yes. Again, you have kids, you have roommates, you have friends, you're looking for something fun and different and new. Pens like sub $30 on Amazon, it's definitely worth making at home. These are a lot of fun. Japanese street food, bebe. That was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun revisiting those dishes. Let me know in the comments below, which country street food would you like to see next? If we like these videos, we're gonna keep them rolling. Best way to support, Grocery Fund, aka the Patreon, keeps the lights on, keeps the conversation moving, and basically just helps us out in the most direct way possible. Regardless of that, our Discord community is popping, so come over there, join the convo, talk Taiyaki with your boil. Um, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. So until next we meet.